So I'm going to put my uh, tomatoes in pots. I've done some already last night, so uh, I've just saved one, so I can sort of show you how I did it. Um, just some money makers. These are the ones that were in the attic. They did have a few problems along the way, but uh, I managed to sort of salvage these ones out of the problem I had regarding the compost and stuff. Um, so, basic two pot method. Some of you have seen me do it before. One with the bottom, and one pretty much the same without a bottom. So I'll have a look how I do it. Right, so it's uh, it's not exactly hard to do. Um, like I say you've got a bottomless pot and um, one with a bottom. Basically put one inside the other. And then you could do with a, a pot the same size that your tomatoes currently in. And um, basically fill with that with compost for now. And then if you want to bury your tomato plant deeper fine do it the traditional way just bung it in and fill up round it i had to do that with my sun golds because they're a bit tall a bit leggy so they went right down to the bottom i tend to do that on um, ones i'm growing outside in, in the actual ground when i used to do some cold subarctic plenty they used to end up in narrow tall pots and all i used to do each time i potted them on was keep putting them deeper and deeper so they end up with a really long deep root system but because this is only a short plant it's not leggy not loads of roots in it either so some of the compost might fall apart. Usually, if you can see roots at the bottom, it should hold together okay. Um, so I'm just going to put a bit of compost in the uh, bottom. Multi-purpose compost. It's just a mix of two. Um, it's Wix's own. And some, uh, I think it's John Singleton, it's called. A uh, bit of a Mickey light in it. Nothing else. So that'll do. Nestle that down like that and sort of get your compost. And just lob it around the outside of the pot you know because uh, in the past I've, I've sort of like pre-done all the pots I mean if, there, if I didn't have any problems with some art plants this year I would have done that you know on a, on a day I'd have just got all my pots ready because it only takes once all your pots are ready it's it's a doddle to do but obviously some are a bit leggy you know because it's a uh, kind of first time outside this because they've been under lights um, but I've got some other ones that we'll have a look at in a bit that um, I kind of saved from the, the compost just as they were germinating and they've done okay and we'll also have a look at the ones that were that kind of stayed in it a bit longer so that's kind of about the height you want it, it doesn't have to be bang in the middle but as near as you can get it and sort of carefully lift that middle pot out you should have a nice square hole this is money maker. The two of my money makers were kind of worst affected. That's why they're like the smallest. It's simply just uh, tip it upside down. So, I mean, there's not loads of roots on it at all. And just simply uh, just drop it in like that. Label back in. That's compost out of the way. And it's going to get watered from the top this time but it'll be the only time it's watered from the top for a long while other than that it'll be watered from the bottom because i need to encourage those roots down to the bottom but this is just to settle it all in it's a little watering can probably holds i don't know good half liter putting a lot in you know because it's, uh, it's quite dry in the pot anyway Sometimes your water's a little bit cold, it might shock them, but this has been sort of sat in this watering can out in the sunshine for about half an hour, but it's still cold. I just pour the lot in. You know, and sometimes what happens is the leaves will droop down like they are now, it's because it's been sat in the polytunnel um, while the sun's been out. And obviously, it's just a way of sort of trying to get out of the heat, but um, it'll be fine, hopefully. So I'll go and uh, whack this in the polytunnel. I'll just give it a couple of minutes just to uh, sort of the excess to drain through. And then I'll probably check them, you know, probably a week and then I'll start bottom watering. You know, just something with about an inch of water in. Stick them in it for about 10, 15 minutes and keep doing that. 
I'm not bothered because eventually they will be fed through this. Um, so these will end up going in my raised beds in the polytunnel probably in about five weeks, I should imagine. As soon as I can see roots at the bottom here, you know, that means I can I can lift that one out then. Um, but that's that's all I do. Um, same, with, same with my peppers, I'll do the peppers exactly the same. Um, depending on size of pot, some peppers will go in a three litre, some in five, and you know, and some in obviously seven and a half or ten, even ten litres, it depends, chilies and peppers, just different requirements. And well, obviously what sort of space, you know, I've got to put everything in, because I've got a, a lot of seedlings I need to sort through, because um, I'm giving a, a lot of them away. Uh, my sister's doing like a, a charity thing, um, and you just donate a lot of things. So I thought, well, I've got a lot of plants spare, I need them out of the way, so. I'll donate them. Well, we'll have, a, we'll have a look at how everything else is doing in the garden. And quickly before we have a look round, because um, obviously some of you haven't seen him for since last year. So he's back out now, the sun's out. This is Kane. He's a, an African sole catatotus. So he's not been out long now. Um, he usually does this, he'll sort of park up in the sun and bask and get warmed up and that, but um, he can eat a hell of a lot. Oh, but like I say, sometimes they're not really up for eating straight away. They want to warm up, but he might, uh, he might have a do. He's he's thinking about it. Yeah. No, he's warming up. So he'll just inhale all that one in his own time. It's like uh, everything's hard work for him at the moment, but. Uh, yeah, he's been cooped up inside since sort of, well, probably October. He's been out a couple of, you know, he's got about three or four days outside now, but it's, um, to, to graze on the grass and everything. But, uh, yeah, he's all right. He's doing all right. Um, sort of slowed right down. I was a bit concerned through the winter months. He slowed down a little bit, but uh, it's a few days. But um, sort of gave him a bath to rehydrate him proper and got some food down him. He was fine. Well, he's 14 year old, nearly. In this this August, so uh, don't know how long they live. You know, different re reports you hear. You know, fifty odd year old in captivity because he doesn't hibernate. You know, um, when I got him, he weighed one ounce, and he's he's I think he's just over fifty pound now. So he's like a lump of concrete. He's pretty heavy, and when you got to start carrying him in and out all the time, it uh, it can be a bit uh, painful on the old back. Come on, Kane, can you come out and have something to eat? No. Yeah? Go on. Let's have a bit of a sniff first. There he goes. But, you don't know where he puts it sometimes. No qualms about giving him like a full lettuce and a full spring green. He'll just eat him a full courgette and some carrots and he'll just eat a lot. Yeah, they're like a goat in a shell. Just to eat and eat and eat, sleep and poo. That's all they do. Oh, he's all right. Right, let's uh, have a look around the garden. So, uh, start off down this bottom end. Um, sweet peas, not doing very well. But uh, I thought I'll leave them be, because the old tops will die off a bit and, you know, I don't know whether you can see, but like this is like an original top that's paling off a bit. But obviously there's new like side shapes, so they'll they'll all catch up hopefully. Because um, I always sow way more than what I need. You know the rest of there, they're they're just hungry. You know, but if I put them in, they put out side shoots, but they're just dumped on there for a reason. A um, lot of compost here. This is going to be featured in another video um, to do a comparison between the varieties. Um, but that's, uh, that's going to be a different different topic, that one. I'm going to put them to the test. Um, what I'm going to grow in them yet, I don't know. But we'll uh, cross that bridge when we come to it. These are the uh, Orla and the Polypots. 16 of them there. Now this here is all spent compost. I spent the other day in the afternoon running it all through a sieve. It's, um, it's what was in the, uh, it's what the cucumbers grew in the last sort of four or five years. And um, there were some other plants in, in pots that, you know, died off. So I just saw, right, I'll sieve it all. It was wet, a few little vine weevil grubs in it. So I've got them out and left. I spread it out, let the birds peck them out. So that's all going to go in. Great big uh, plant pot. 
like a two foot pot that um, and I'll put carrots in it because it'd be easier to sort of net that up. All right, moving along, uh, some raspberry canes growing in a, a pot. These were salvaged from the plot. I had about one or two that were sort of struggling. So I dug them up and brought them back and they've had a couple of years in that pot and they're thickening up. So just so I can run more canes off if I need to. And the polytunnel. So these are the uh, sort of selection. Um, so these are, that's the one who's just in the uh, pot on that one. The money maker, what's that one? Probably in Alicante. Yep, it's an Alicante. I've got Gardener's Delight, San Marzano, Sun Gold. Not looking very healthy, but they're all right. They're just it's the heat. It's just sapping them. You know, once they start getting some new roots out to this other compost, so they, they should be okay. I've opened that bit of uh, mesh there just to let a bit of air flow through because it, uh, it is hot in here. It's probably uh, 30, nearly 40 degrees. So I don't want to be in here too long myself. Um, moving around this way. And leeks, they were like some extra ones I saw, but the first ones seem to be doing all right, so I'll probably use these. Peppers, miles too many peppers than what I, I'm in, got space for, you know, because the first lot were really slow to germinate and I did some more, so it's just a case of picking what I want. You know, there's a lot of them I've never grown before. California Wonder I've done, and the Apaches and the Basket of Fire I've done, but the other ones I've never done before. Um, these are the other tomatoes, these are the ones that are sort of pricked out from the bad compost just as they were sort of just germinating so they didn't have time to really get the roots down in it. And then the ones that had sort of like a week longer in it, this is like the result, you know, just slowly recovering. Now it's obviously because you, you dilute it out but you can see it's kind of growing off a side shoot. You know, not great at all, just distorted, an absolute mess. Um, but there's one in particular that I, I really wanted to, to survive. So I only had one germinate from old seed. I used to grow these called Subarctic Plenty. Now that had a lot of problems, but it's kind of recovered finally. And it's it's doing okay. Roots are poking out. So that'll get in another pot soon. And I'm only growing that really to get some more seed. That's all I'm growing that Subarctic Plenty for. So, because uh, the seeds are from like 2014, I think. And I say one germinated. So I thought, right, if I can get that one through it, then uh, I'd be happy. These are the uh, second batch of Santero onions. Um, doing okay, you know, a bit patchy germination. I think there's about on, just over 100 out of the three trays. Where I'm going to put them all, no idea. Um, I've got a few ideas, but I don't know if I've got enough room for all of them. Because uh, there's, there's a celery that needs to find somewhere. That's the thing, I'm... Very short on space, believe it or not. And these are the rocket potatoes. They're starting to get uh, little buds on now. So um, I only watered them for the first time, I think, uh, about three or four days ago. And they were, they were planted in sort of February. So I'll just, I'm not watered them a lot. I'm just going to slowly damp, you know, because they haven't been dry and the water will just fly through. So it's just a case of slowly adding the water to get the um, compost back to being fairly porous. Um, but it, yeah, you've got to start fleecing them at night when it's cold. When we had a frost last night, um, yeah, the, these peppers stayed in here and these tomatoes. I just I fleeced them and bubble wrapped them, and they were okay. But uh, apart from that, every every other night before that, they've had to come in, and these were in the loft. So every night now, these have to come in. So there's like 18 pots here. I've got to take indoors. That was that's left over from all the lettuce because I've plant, planted the bottom of the garden up now. Uh, some beans, testing compost there, because obviously this is the stuff um, that I had a problem with. Um, so I've got uh, right, two unopened bags, one with, with some left in it, that sold me peas in. And then obviously the, the, the main one in question I have none left of, um, apart from I managed to get a bit out of an old seed tray. But like I say, it's been watered through and washed through, so most of the trays have probably come out. Been in touch with them, evergreen, sent them pictures, but they just sort of like don't want to know. And uh, and they just sort of like say, well, there's no green waste in it because it's peat. It's all peat based. And I thought, well, I've, I've only added water to it. So God knows what that's going to happen now. So I'm hoping I can just sort of prove something and go, right, there you are, here's your product. So these are some uh, 
some Zabrun shallots and some Bristol onions and poppies. I've planted a few of them out, some petunias. Um, put the poppies down there. It's just like I say, just trying to find some space to put things is a bit of a nightmare. And then here we have swift potatoes. Uh, not very mammoth onions there. I think there's 12. I just bunged them in. They're usually way higher than that now, so they're not going to come to anything at all, much at all. But I'm not bothered. I thought I'd shove them in. A few spring onions down here. Nothing else planted in this bed. Until you get to the top here. Now under that. I'll just put this nail for a bit of shade. There's two rolls of carrots in there. Um, I can't think of the variety I've found. I'll put it in the description anyway. Um, I've not grown them before. They're in F1 as far as I can remember. So um, they're all uh, sown probably about a week ago. And then we go to the big carrot box. Starting to see, I don't know how you can see, but there's, there's starting to germinate. But it's always a bit problematic because you know they dry out sometimes. So you don't want to flood them and damp them off or scald them. So it's just tricky, you know. Cause it, if you put a, a cover over this, they'll just scorch. It's just a case of trying to be patient. And if some fire, fine. If some don't, you've got to resow them. Um, spring greens, I need them out the way. So. We're going to be eating them and Kane's going to be eating them because the plan is is where that bed is, well, where that net is, all the way over to that blue string, I can get probably about 60 or 70 onions in this area. And I've got a little bit of room down at the plot because I've, I've put what onions I could sort of salvage out of the bad lot in the bed just to see if they come to anything. I thought, I can't throw them away. There's some that started with shoots on, so I thought, right, well, I'll put them in and see what happens. There, Pentland Crowns. I wasn't going to put them over there, but I thought, you know what, sod it. Fence over there, so I just put something for them to keep them, keep them back, because they don't get as tall as King Edwards, not as far as I can remember anyway, because King Edwards end up going way past the fence. So, uh, so they're main croppers. Didn't even bother chitting them. I sort of last minute order them. They came, no chits on them, so I just bunged them in. Uh, there's two to a pot. They're all 30 litre pots. Drilled some more holes in the bottom, some sort of 20 mil holes. They're buried about four inch deep, the pots at the bottom. So I've not watered them. And I've not even watered them either. Because the compost was damp when I put it in and we've had, you know, it's, it, if you start watering it, so you might rot the actual seed potato off. So, you know, there's enough energy and dampness in there to, you know, until it starts coming through, they don't really need too much water. As long as it's not bone dry, um, it should be fine. And then once they start coming through, then Start adding the water. Over this side, right, so we've got uh, some uh, Grenoble Red. They're all kind of like nine inch in all directions, these. These are all going to be kind of cut and come again, these. And the Mazur, I've got some, you know, in the block there, some Mazur. They were affected. Um, they're starting to uh, look like they're coming to now, because obviously they've been putting some more roots out into soil. And then there's some other one there, or Clara, something like it's called. And then in that bed, we've got the Remain. The red salad bowl, you see, wasn't planted in it. And that's gone way ahead, you know, and it's, it's probably six weeks younger, that. Um, that's the Durham Early Spring Greens, just starting to perk up a bit now. Really slow, though. And these were the... the the ones I was testing, the different cauliflowers. I've got two lots of cauliflower. They're, they're planted in a bit of a weird shape. I've got like two at the back, the three here, and then these here. They're cauliflower. Then I've got like one, two, sort of three, four, five broccoli, and then five collie, five broccoli. So there's 20 plants in there. A bit tight for that bed, but it's just a trial run to see what they're like. And if they do all right, then it possibly could be a replacement for a variety that I usually grow. Uh, what else have we been up to? Um, had a bit of a sort out in here. As I was clearing my cucumber bed, it kind of fell to pieces. So I thought, you know what, bugger it, I'll make a new bed. It's all lined with uh, black uh, polythene, apart from the, the bottom's open, obviously. but um, And in the bottom, I've, I've got some stuff for drainage. Well, I've all done in the bottom for a couple of inches of drainage. I've just crushed some old tin cans up and then covered them with like some scaffold netting. And that takes up like the bottom two or three inch. Just sometimes it does flood in there, so it's to um, stop them getting too wet. 
that's where the Q comes in to go over the fem spot. I've not sown them yet, a bit behind, to be honest. So cucumbers and beans and all that lot are going to get sown pretty soon, probably over this weekend. But uh, that's about it in the garden, really. You know, um, sweet candle, nothing much happening there. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, lots of jobs to get on with. Uh, emptying pots out, there's some more raspberries I brought back from the plot. The one and only that survived from the last batch. It spent last year sort of in a little pot and it's sprouted two off, so I split it apart and put them in pots in the shade. That's just branch off my gooseberry that I planted on last year and it's uh, it's rooted, so they can stay there in the shade a bit so they don't get uh, give them a chance to get some more roots grown and they're just they're, they're an option, you know, should I need some. Well, there's lots of tidying up, lots of sorting out to do. And then uh, get on with some sowing. But I'm going to put on some peppers and sort them carrots out. So that will possibly be in another video, that. But um, that's it for this video. So just a quick update. Don't know how you can see, but I've down here, I've got some spring onions in one of these little um, like punnet tray things. Um, I thought I had some bunches left over, so I thought, you know what, stuff it, I'll shove, it, I'll shove some in. Because it's about a back door, you know, and I can just come out and grab some if I need some. Otherwise, the bulk of them are down at the plot. Went down the plot, you know, to plant the onions out, and they were, uh, things aren't great down there, to be honest. Um, all the brassicas, like I say, um, they just had a poor start, you know, bad compost. You know, they, they didn't didn't kill them, but it's done summer to them, because they should have started um, getting some better roots down and growing, but they just, they, they were in a bit of a bad way, to be honest, so I might have to kind of write off the first half this season. But hopefully the next batch. I'll be better, which I'll be sowing. Um, well, I'll give it, if, if there's no hope for them, I'll sow them a bit earlier, but if there is a bit of hope for them, because they've got a lot of growing to do before they start putting a head on, and, and they'll just ultimately put a head on too early at the end of with just a tiny head. But I might as well get some off them and then get them out and get something else, you know, another run in, try and get another another full two beds of the um, collie and broccoli and that, because that'll see me over the winter then. So that's it for this video. I'll take care. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you very soon. See you now. Bye-bye.